As a family, we have never believed that people can disappear into thin air. We know someone knows something, and we ask that you come forward to put an end to this relentless nightmare. Many people over the past 16 years have questioned why we continue to search for Trevor. The answer is simple if you knew Trevor. We can sum it up by saying if the situation was reversed, he would never give up on us. Hello, and welcome to Unsolvable. In today's episode, we will be exploring the strange disappearance of Trevor Dealey, a 22-year-old IT specialist from Dublin who vanished on the night of his Christmas party in the year 2000. Other than some haunting footage captured by security cameras, there are very few clues which could help explain the events that took place that night. If you're ready, let's begin. Trevor Dealey was born on the 15th of August 1978. He was the son of Michael and Anne Dealey and the youngest of four siblings. He grew up in Ireland and went to school in Nars, which is in the county of Kildare. After finishing school, Trevor attended the Waterford Institute of Technology to study business, but dropped out after his second year. From there, he moved to Dublin, where he studied IT and computers. He remained in Dublin after completion of his course, and in May 1999, he began working for the Bank of Ireland in its IT department. It was then, some 19 months later, on December 7th, 2000, that Trevor disappeared. December 7th was a Thursday, and was a night of the Bank of Ireland's staff Christmas party. Trevor, who was 22 years old at the time, attended the party and he had a great time. The party involved multiple pubs and bars and the night ended at a nightclub in Dublin. It was around 3.30am on December 8th that Trevor left the nightclub. Unable to flag down a taxi, Trevor set out on foot. Since a heavy storm was descending upon the city, Trevor decided to make his way to his office and pick up an umbrella, which was only a couple of minutes away from the nightclub, before continuing his journey home. While in the office, he responded to a couple of emails and had a cup of coffee with his colleague, Kyle Pender, who was working the night shift that night. The co-worker would later, during an interview with the police, described Trevor as being a bit tipsy, but not overly intoxicated. After finishing his cup of coffee, Trevor grabbed one of the office's corporate golfing umbrellas and continued his journey home. CCTV captures him leaving the building at 4.02am. The call log on his mobile phone showed he used it shortly after 4am to leave a short voicemail for a friend and this was the last time anyone heard from him. The voicemail itself is of no significance. It was simply, Hi Glenn, I've missed you there. Just on my way home, all's going good. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Trevor failed to show up to work the morning after the Christmas party, but nobody seemed overly concerned at the time. His colleagues knew he was out till late the night before and assumed he was suffering from a hangover. It wouldn't be until the Monday that people began to worry. After failing to show up to work again, people realised no one had been in contact with him since the night of the party. Trevor shared an apartment with two flatmates, but both were away on holiday that weekend, so were unaware of Trevor being missing. Trevor's sister had tried to call him multiple times that weekend. She claimed that Trevor's phone was ringing until December 11th, when it started going straight to voicemail. After he was officially reported missing, police investigators began examining CCTV footage. 
One piece of footage showed him entering the office building through the rear gate around 3.30 a.m. This footage also captured an unidentified man dressed in black who had been standing in the same spot near the gate since 3.05 a.m. Trevor can be seen having a brief conversation with this man before walking through the gate and into the office building. According to the co-worker he shared a coffee with that night, Trevor never mentioned anything about this man or their brief conversation. When Trevor exited the building around one hour later, the man in black was no longer there. The last official sighting of Trevor occurred when CCTV footage showed him passing by an ATM at 4.14 a.m. 30 seconds later, after Trevor had walked out of frame, a man dressed in black passed by the ATM and headed in the same direction as Trevor. Whilst it is believed that this was the same man who had been seen standing outside Trevor's office, the footage is not very clear and the police couldn't say with absolute certainty that this was in fact the same man. Despite the police issuing a public plea for this man to come forward, no one ever did. So, who was the man in black? What did he say to Trevor? And why was this man just standing there at 3am in the morning? These are just some of the questions that have been left unanswered. Whilst it isn't known whether this man dressed in black was involved with Trevor's disappearance, his behaviour suggests he had intent, and the police certainly considered him to be a person of interest. Security footage from that night also captured Trevor walking beside the Grand Canal. It was thought he might have fallen in and drowned. However, neither Trevor's body nor his umbrella were ever recovered, and the authorities seemed certain his body would have been recovered if he was in the canal. The sub-aqua team who searched the river compared it to a swimming pool in terms of the clarity of the water. Piecing together the security footage, the police were able to establish the route home Trevor was taking. It would have required him to walk down a road where the United States Embassy was located. Coincidentally, President Clinton was due to visit Dublin on December 13th, and as such, his security team performed a thorough search of the area surrounding the embassy, but found no evidence linked to Trevor's disappearance or evidence to indicate foul play. Within a day of Trevor being discovered missing, his family arrived in Dublin. Immediately, they began putting up hundreds of posters handed out thousands of leaflets and went from house to house and business to business inquiring if people had seen him. Police Sergeant Michael Fitzgerald, who worked on the case from the beginning, said he had never worked on a case where the family were so proactive. Over the next couple of weeks, the case gained traction in the media. The investigation was huge and thousands of posters were pinned everywhere, even in cities on the opposite side of the country. But unfortunately, nothing came of it. No one came forward to provide information that could have helped the investigation. Whilst the rivers in the city had been thoroughly searched and found no trace of Trevor, many people still believed he drowned. During the investigation, it came to light that Trevor had taken a trip to Alaska just weeks before his disappearance. The purpose of this trip was to visit a young lady who he had met online. Despite the lady making several excuses as to why he shouldn't visit, it would appear he ignored them and travelled there anyway. Unsurprisingly, he received a cold reception from the lady and likely returned home feeling despondent 
after wasting his time and money travelling to the far side of the world just to be rejected. Walking home alone and drunk after the Christmas party with a large body of water beside him, some believe the simplest explanation for his disappearance is that he sadly committed suicide. Furthermore, it is possible that the reason he went to the office at 3am and checked his emails was to see if she had emailed him. It would have been around 7pm in Alaska at that time. Maybe he was expecting an email from her. Two detectives travelled to Alaska to speak to the lady who Trevor had visited before his disappearance, as did Trevor's sister, but neither of the trips generated any new leads or provide any information that they didn't already know. This suicide theory, however, cannot be confirmed without a body, and despite the best efforts made by the sub-aqua team, Trevor's body was never found, and he remains a missing person. In more recent years, in August 2017, the police performed a search of a three-acre woodland area located 8 kilometers away from where Trevor was last seen. This was following an informant claiming that a member of a well-known criminal family confessed to him about threatening Trevor at gunpoint before killing him. The informant said that Trevor's body was concealed inside a sewer located in this woodland area. However, the search produced no evidence or trace of Trevor's remains and the credibility of the informant's story has been questioned and has since been dismissed by the police. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any further developments in the investigation and the search for Trevor Dealey has long gone cold. The family has now accepted Trevor is no longer alive but still hope that they can one day discover what really happened the night of his disappearance. Trevor's father even offered a 100,000 euro reward to anyone who could provide them with information that would solve the mystery of his son's disappearance. And that's all for this week. Thank you all for watching. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and check out our other mysteries. Until next week, goodbye.